Welcome to Talking Buffalo, featuring conversations with guests from around the world of sports, media, pop culture, and all things Buffalo, with your host, Patrick Moran. All right, what is going on, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to another episode of Talking Buffalo, your weekday daily driver for Buffalo Sports Talk and more. My name is Patrick Moran. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, listening, following, subscribing. I appreciate you all very much. Uh, today is the third in what will be a five-week uh, Buffalo Bills mock draft series. Week one, we kicked it off. I had Bruce Nolan, formerly of Buffalo Rumleys. I had to pull myself back there on that one. I did one solo last week. Hated it. Actually, I love the mock. Hated doing it. Um, fortunately this week, I'm not by myself because I am joined by my buddy, man. One of the very best content creators out there. Anthony Brohaska cover one, man. What is going on? Anthony? how you doing, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for having me. We, we were trying to link up a couple weeks ago and I got the plague and it wasn't able to happen. And I'm <laughs> pumped to be here. This is my second time on the show and I'm pumped for the mock draft and conversations and everybody's irrational anger that comes towards us for whoever we pick or don't pick in the mock. You know, I, I got to say this too. We were talking for a few minutes beforehand and you would think, all right, it's a mock draft. And uh, I might tell you what I might be thinking, you know, with some receivers I might like or what the bills may or may not do. We'll might cover a little bit of that before we actually get into the mock. But what were we talking about, man? I can't help myself here. We're, we're t- we were talking about wrestling and WrestleMania. Right. This is going to be hard because we're recording this. I got to put this out there, too, for a couple reasons. We're recording this actually very, very early Saturday afternoon, even though we're not dropping this to Saturday. Noteworthy for two reasons. Number one, if something were to happen with the Buffalo Bills crazy over the next few days, I want you to know that we've already covered this mock and done this mock beforehand. So this was already in the can. And then two, more importantly, as far as I'm concerned, WrestleMania will be well over with. So we can't talk wrestling when we don't know what's going to happen. And it'll be three days past due, but it's a big wrestling. And one of many things I like about you too, man, you're a big, big wrestling guy as well. So it's going to be hard to not talk about that today, but I know we know it's coming up this weekend. Yeah, it's just and it snuck up on me. I don't know why I thought it was like later in the in the month of April and I knew it was coming up. And then like this week, it was like the final on Monday. It was like the final Raw before WrestleMania. And I was like, yeah, that, oh, that's right. And it just yeah. yeah. And I I we were talking before, like I gravitate much more now towards like New Japan and AEW. And I still keep tabs yeah. on, on WWE. But this is a mania. Yeah, for I, really from the main event storyline, but even everything, like I'm pumped to see AJ Styles and kind of if, see him finish this uh, with LA Knight. Like I think Rhea Ripley and Becky is going to be a sick match. I really, really, really hope with what they've done. Like, we, honestly, we could go on and on for like ever. Like it's it's a pretty yeah. strong card. I'm interested <laughs> to see what happens both nights. And yeah, just the idea of like recording it now, but when it drops and things happening in between. I also kind of feel that like I did – I did like a, a big board bills episode on Tuesday for disguise yeah. coverage. And then digs gets traded Wednesday. And I'm like, great. Everything I did last night is useless. Like, because everything I talked about doesn't apply anymore. It's so like, we don't want to get caught in that in between, but there's stuff we <laughs> want to talk about again, man. There's it's a lot. I'm pumped though. You know, last week. So I did a mock last week. I dropped it on Wednesday morning, uh, put it up on social media, like 9. AM three hours later. <laughs> well, you know what though? Man? I don't know that it was blown up. I don't know that it was blown up because of who I took more on that in a second, but you know, I watched cover one last week, but right after the digs tray, you, you did a show, you and Eric, of course, Oh, uh, you had Chris Trapasso on too. And you guys were, were talking about that trade. Obviously in the moment, there's a lot of shock, you know, shock value right, right off the bat. Initially, of course, let me ask you this. So as, as we're having this conversation, you know, a handful of days later, good three days later. So by the time this drops, it'll be, close to a, a full week at that point. Um, how, how do you feel now about this trade before we even get into, you know, prospects in the mock? How do you feel about this trade now that you've had some time to kind of process it and maybe some things that initially you didn't think about right off the bat? I feel a little better about the return of the second round pick, knowing what Houston was doing with the contract, which is still weird. Like, kind of making it basically essentially like a one-year deal. So they gave up a second essentially for like a one-year rental of Stefan Diggs. And 
and still like a very, uh, this whole, it's all weird. Like everything with Diggs has been so weird lately, like from the cryptic stuff to like some of that coming true and they're being fired at the smoke and then the stuff with Houston. So I feel a little better about the return. I'm still in a state though, and I'm still going to maintain this. Like I, right now, the Buffalo Bills on paper and on the field are not a better team with Stefan Diggs not being on their roster. Even if, right. and we talked a lot about it in that episode that you referenced, we like maybe they're moving away from you know things in a different direction schematically, and so Stefan Diggs or the type of player that he is isn't necessarily as important as he was previously. Okay, like he's still a really good football player, and I'd rather have him on my team than not, provided he's not a cancer or toxic nightmare that potentially he may have been. Um, I really just kind of push back overall on the idea of. I know his performance down the stretch waned significantly. I don't think he's washed. I mean, you can go and watch watch him cook Legereus Sneed against Kansas City. Watch him beat Jalen Ramsey a bunch. I mm. feel like people forget about that catch on the sideline, um, not against Ramsey, but when Allen like rolls out and like flings it downfield and Diggs makes that sliding catch and plucks it off the ground. Like all these amazing moments. But now that he's gone, everyone's like, well, he wa- he's washed and he sucked. Even if you thought he was a mad person or a diva or whatever, I think on the field he still produces. I still think he's capable of being a wide receiver one. And at worst, oh, no, he's like a super high-end wide receiver too. So they have to do some things to correct for him not being there. I think they can mitigate his loss. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I, I think they have the opportunity to mitigate that loss. I don't think they're as good of a football team right now without him than with him. But I do feel a little bit better on the return knowing what like is happening as far as his contract. Are you a little bit surprised to hear some details in, in some cases reported in other cases, maybe just opinions and I don't want this, you know, we're, we're not TMZ. That's not what you and I do. We're not going to sit there and gossip about people in the locker room and cancer clubhouse, all that other stuff. But are you a little bit surprised to hear some of the stuff that's been out? I mean, Tim Graham's report mm-hmm. about the blow up between him and Josh Allen or Josh Allen snapping at him after the Jets opener last year, just things like that. Uh, him being, I, I, I guess, allegedly, you know, convinced that he's the, the biggest reason why Josh Allen became who he was, so on and so forth. Just, I, I guess, kind of attacks maybe a little bit to some extent on his character. Some of it quite possibly warranted, maybe some in some cases not. But are you a little bit surprised to, to hear some of the things that we've been hearing since the trade? Not really. I, I think with his track record, unfortunately, I think a- anywhere he goes, he's going to kind of carry that stigma with him. And if things don't work out, whether rightly or wrongly, I think you're going to see these type of reports. Um, and and so it doesn't surprise me. I Especially again, like look at how he left Minnesota. Look now how he potentially left Buffalo. I think people treat that as kind of the same and see him as this like, selfish diva type and of course like he said this and so everybody kind of just wants to pile on and pile on and pile on potentially whether it's fans or people covering or whatever and tim's tim's piece was all like super insightful like knowing that kind of potential blow up after week one um you know myself and eric spoke about some things that we uh were privy to and some things that we knew that happened during the off season last year leading into this season um i also think some of it too like i guess i'm i mean now i know i'm probably in the minority I've never really had a problem with Stefan Diggs and like what he does. I, I think dude works extremely hard. He grinds. Yeah. And I know a lot of people come into my comments now being like, all he cares about is fashion and trying to do this for image and this and that dude works so hard, like to perfect his craft. You don't get to be that good of a route runner without dedicating yourself to the craft of football. He grinds. He works extremely hard. And when you operate in that way, similar to, I don't want to make this exact comparison, but kind of similar to like how Kobe Bryant was. Like, if you're not performing up the snuff, he's not going to be like, hey, man, pick it up. He's like, yo, dude, you suck. Like, get better. We have to do this. I'm not saying Diggs necessarily did that type of stuff, but Diggs is, sure. he he treats himself with that level of competitiveness and expecting 10 out of 10 every time. And I think he does that with other people as well. And also mixed within that, there are the times of we used to see so many shots of it and people would praise him for it and juxtapose it with his fiery nature when things were going sideways in game and he's dapping up Lyman and being like, come on guys, we'll be fine. Let's get it together. Or him telling Josh, Hey, it'll be fine. We'll get it together. And, but then the times when he's trying to hold people accountable to a similar manner that he holds himself accountable, 
I think because of his previous stops and his track record, it gets painted in that negative light. And then when things don't ultimately work out in totality, it's like, nope, everything was always a negative. He was always a problem. And I'm not saying he wasn't a problem in some ways, but overall, like to, to kind of answer your question fully, like, no, I, I'm not surprised. Like, I think when you have that type of track record and you're kind of that wear out your welcome guy, once you leave, things come to light or things get painted in a different light or different picture and everybody just kind of pieces it together to be like, nope, he is who we thought he was. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk with you for a couple of minutes and then we're going to get into our mock draft about mock drafts themselves. I mean, look, it's that time of year, obviously. This is what content creators do, whether they know a lot about these prospects, like you and Eric and some of the people that cover one, or whether you're just throwing darts at the wall. It's fun to do. Uh, the, the consumer likes them. Yes. They, 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 they feed on them. They want them. Some people are like, why are there so many mock drafts? Well, there's so many mock draft shows because people are watching them and in some cases, getting plenty from them, which is kind of what I wanted to ask you about here. What are your takes like on mock drafts? I had Bruce on a couple weeks ago, and one of the many things he said that really resonated with me is it's not about trying to get them accurate. It's not about how many picks you will ultimately nail. It's not about you know the predictiveness of a mock draft and, and mm -hmm. determining whether it's a success or a failure. He says they are great thought exercises. That's yeah. what he kept saying you know, over and over and over again. Because every year, at the end of the day, you can be the biggest football mind in the world, and there's always going to be one or two trades or some shocker picks that kind of blow your, your mock to, to smithereens. You know what I mean? So it's not really about who gets the most picks right. Like I said, it's about a thought exercise. You kind of speak on that a little bit. I, I'm sure it helps you, like, going through the prospects, where some players may be, what some other teams may be thinking. That's, like, what you learn by doing this exercise. Am I correct with that assessment? Yeah, I completely agree. It's it's kind of kind of like a giant game of would you rather and just kind of puts it all in front of you instead of having to come up with scenarios, they're all put mm -hmm. in front of you like, man, Johnny Newton fell to 28, but AD Mitchell is still there and oh no, but Brian Thomas fell in this one. Now it's Thomas and Mitchell. You didn't think that scenario was going to happen. Now what do you really want to do? Um, yeah, I completely agree with that notion of, of it being a thought exercise and it it gives you the the structure to essentially compare everyone and play would you rather. And then the trade aspect of, oh, I can move back and get this. There's there's four players I like right now, and I can move three picks back and still get one of them and acquire a third. Do I want to do that, or do I really love one of these four guys more than the other, and I want to go with it? Um, and I also watched that episode, and there was another thing that Bruce said that sticks with me for these mocks. And especially with the PFF one, because I've done a bunch like I if I'm watching something and a commercial comes up, I do like a quick like two minute mock just to like kill time. Or if I'm mm -hmm. waiting in line somewhere, I'll do a mock. What starts to creep into my mind and Bruce said this as well is trying to play the mock for the sake of the mock versus playing the simulator. And knowing like I can make this move because I know I can still get Javon Baker at this pick or I know sure. I can get Malik Washington later at pick 128 if I do X, Y and Z. And that always creeps into my mind because I don't like, I don't want to take advantage of the simulator and know like, oh, I'm trying to get the best mock because I do do them for like a thought exercise. Oh, what happens if I take this person at 28? How does it change the board or do this? And it's it's hard to do it knowing what you can get away with later because you've done so many and you recognize how the simulator works. That is an outstanding point. Because yeah, you could play the mock simulator if you know like, if you've done enough, especially, like, say, if, like, we're doing a PFF today, when you do enough of them, you kind of get, no, nine out of ten times, this player is going to be available there. So, yeah. I already know that I could take him. In real life, it's not going to, it probably doesn't work that way. So No, you don't get a bunch of simulators for the NFL draft and be like, <laughs> well, we've done it a bunch, so I know Timmy's going to be here later. Like, no, it does, it does not work like that. Exactly. So, with this, you know, circling back real quick here to the Stefan Diggs trade, do you feel like, this opens up things that may not have been previously open. Like, I'm not going to say before Stefan got traded that it would have been, say, impossible if the Bills were thinking about maybe a Julio Jones-type trade. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was impossible, but very, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very unlikely. Still probably is. But mm -hmm. do you feel like now there's more things on the table when it comes to how they address receiver than it was last week? Maybe moving into the teens, the late teens, early teens, or mid-teens for a certain player. Or like I said, Odunze Falls, 9-10, that that might be a little more realistic than it was, say, a week ago. 
absolutely. I think anything having to do with wide receiver has an increased likelihood, even if it's like a 5% chance, but I think everything on the table, like the odds of them going receiver in the first round, I think have increased the odds of them double dipping at wide receiver and take, whether it's back to back rounds or just taking two receivers in this class, maybe even three, like the odds of multiple receivers coming to the bills has increased. Now the odds of them potentially trading up if someone they really like, if they really like AD Mitchell or they really like Brian Thomas and they're sitting there at 22 or 23, the odds of them maybe trading up a little bit. I think too, like the odds of maybe potentially a blockbuster uh, have gone up potentially a bit. Although I am, I am against that to a degree. I wouldn't mind it. Like if the bills make a trade and end up with Romo Dunze or Malik neighbors at the end of the day, like I'm not going to be upset. Um, but with the needs of this team as in 2024 and going forward, and especially even for how guaranteed prospects can be knowing how much of a crap shoot the draft still is. I prefer to have more swings at the plate than less. So I would like to keep some of those picks. I would like to get a third and trade some of the like, day three quantity to get some more day two quality. Um, but no, I, I think to your point, like everything having to do with wide receivers more on the table. I was a big proponent last, well, really up till Wednesday when that trade happened, I was a big proponent of like, Hey, if Johnny Newton falls to 28, I'm pulling that trigger. If Jackson powers, Johnson is there. If Graham Barton somehow falls even from, and I know a lot of people didn't like this one. Like even the idea of corner, like if Kool-Aid McKinstry was there at 28 or Terry and Arnold was there at 28, I'd be like, man, Rasul Douglas is a UFA in 2025. Benford keeps getting banged up. Elam's an unknown quantity. Do you take one of those guys? That's great value. And they fell, yada, yada. Now I'm, I'm more into the camp of like, even if Newton is there, who I really like, and A.D. Mitchell is there, I kind of feel like you have to go A.D. Mitchell or unless you're, then you're starting to play that game of, okay, now you have to hope so-and-so falls to pick 60 and then that cascading effect. So yeah, I think everything with receiver is more on the table now from a percentage standpoint. I feel like a lot of fans are, the expectation is that they're going to have to go up and get one. And I know you know yes. enough receivers in this draft to know that that's not automatically the case. You could get some good receivers uh, without moving up. In my mock draft last week, I had two small trade-ups. I moved up a couple spots to get Chop Robinson this was mm. before the Diggs trade. And then I moved up to get uh, Xavier Leggett in the second round. He was still there, which again, real life. I don't know. He ain't going to be there. <laughs> he ain't going to be there. And pick 50. I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I'm sounding like I already know a foregone conclusion. I would be surprised um, if he is one last thing too. I did a little bit of homework here and I went through the most recent NFL like draft value chart. And I know these things aren't always completely accurate, but mm. I feel like they give you a, a rough idea. And I know there's a lot of people wondering about the bills moving up. Uh, according to the math of the chart, if they wanted to move up, say there's a guy you like and you want to move up three spots to get him, you're worried that a team might leapfrog you to go get your guy or whatever. A first, a fourth, and a seventh should get you up about three spots. According to the charts, a first and a third could get you around pick 21. The Bills don't have a third this year, so uh -huh. really don't know if they would want to do that. Uh, if you're talking about that second pick that they got from for Diggs for next year, if you were to package your first and maybe that pick, that could get you around the mid-teens of round one. And if you want to go all nutty, <laughs> a couple first, two first, maybe a second <laughs> for a third swap, that might get you somewhere around the top 10. Joe Marino put out a tweet. Um, I wanted to say yesterday. I was going to say yesterday. Yesterday, the day. yesterday was some Joe Marino put out a tweet last week um, talking about the Detroit Lions trade um, for 2022. They traded picks 32, 34, and 66. For um, to Minnesota for 12 and 46. So that might be a recent you know, baseline to, to where you might, if you want to get there, what it would probably cost you. In the Bills case, their first or second, sounds like two seconds. So first or two seconds for a first and a third is probably uh, what you're looking at. Also, and something we're going to talk about when this mock start, starts, huh. if you wanted to trade up in the second round, right? Like say you stay at pick 28, you don't make a move, but come round two, you really like a guy if you were to trade your second this year and next year, that might get you all the way up the board. Like if you're at 60 and you want to get to the mid thirties for a guy you really like, according to the math, giving up mm -hmm. two seconds would probably uh, get you there. One last mm -hmm. question. What do you think? And I'm sure you have a pretty good idea. Not saying it will be the raw move, but if the bills don't make a trade, all right. And they get on the clock and it's pick 28 and he gets up there and with the 28 pick, the Buffalo bills select. Defensive end, Chop Robinson, defensive mm. tackle, Braden Fisk. I don't know, a couple of guys like that. What is the reaction going to be from Bill's Mafia, from fans, if they don't take a receiver with that first pick, man? 
anarchy, chaos. Um, <laughs> the scene in Shrek when everybody's grabbing torches and pitchforks to go like kill Shrek in the swamp. That like it it, it really would be. I, I think majority of fans were on the wide receiver train even before Diggs was traded. Now without Diggs, I think that's even more so. And I also think the the, the wide receiver in round one crowd is like really hostile and like angry and violent at just from like, if I do a mock and I don't take a wide receiver in the first round, like there's no like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's, this is social media in a nutshell, really, but it's, there's no like, Oh, okay. I think I'd like to go with Xavier to get there, but that's fine. It's like, you suck. This mock is laughable. How dare you do this to us? Blah, blah. Like I just, and if that happens in real life, now that Diggs is gone, yeah, man, I, I just see torches and pitchforks and everybody wanting to march to one Bill's drive and burn it to the ground because of, you know, how could you miss this obvious need? They'd have to come back then and get a receiver immediately in round two and then try and get one in round four. Or if they got a round three pick, they're getting two receivers there. Like you'd have to do something to quell that. But even that, right, I think people are still going to be upset because even if you end up with Javon Baker and Jalen Polk or Jermaine Burton and, 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 and Javon Baker, like some of these kind of day two wide receivers, people are still going to be upset. Like you could have traded up and got Brian Thomas or AD Mitchell was there and you didn't, or some people, you know, even though Xavier worthy small, some people still really like him. Like you could add Xavier worthy, especially to, I don't know, like the first time AD Mitchell catches a touchdown in the regular season, everyone's gonna be like, see, you could have had that. This draft sucks. I can't believe Bean did this. It's going to be, there's going to be negativity in that moment in the draft. And I think for like weeks and months and years to come, depending on what happens. Yeah, it's going to be bad if they don't go wide receiver in, in the first round for a majority of people. Dude, if they take an offensive lineman at 28 and then say A.D. Mitchell goes to the Chiefs at 32. Bro, oh my God. Like, it's just going to be so, <laughs> so fiery. Or even, yeah, I just, that's the worst one. Like, the Chiefs, the Bills going, that that's like the end of world scenario. The Bills don't go receiver in round one. And then one of those receivers that the Bills, Bills fans have tagged and fallen in love with goes to the Chiefs at 32. That's just the word. That's what you're going to see the most. Like, <laughs> of course, the Bills did this and the Chiefs did this. Yeah. That, that, you nailed it. That's the worst part of it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let, let's get this set up here. And again, it's a seven round mock draft. Anth is going to ultimately make the picks. Um, I'm kind of just going to be like your gopher. If you tell me you want to look positions, you know how PFF works. You've done a billion of these. The only thing I don't like about these, and I'm sure you probably feel the same, is if you wanted to pause, say, a pick 20, and you wanted to get a look at who's still on the board. You can't go, re you know what I yeah. mean? You can't look at the players. It's the one glitch about PFF that I really wish that they would, uh, same that they would fix. All right. So how about this? We'll, we'll, we'll get this going and we'll just go through the first, say eight picks. And, and then we'll look at what Chicago, when they're on the board at nine, if people are out there looking at receiver, one of the big three, we'll see if that's even a possibility. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll get it going here. Oh, I kind of got this going a little bit faster than Ooh, I wanted Pat's to. Took, Pat took Harrison. Oh, interesting. Hold on. One more I meant to do. All right. So Chicago would be on the clock now. So Harrison went third to the Patriots. And by the way, we're doing this on video, but most of the audience is audio. So I got to make sure I explain as mm -hmm. good as I can. Harrison goes three to the to the Patriots. Wow. Um, Brock Bowers see. in the top five. Yeah, Brock. Wow. This is a weird draft. Qu Quinion Mitchell going to the Falcons at eight. Okay. Okay. All right. So the Bears are on the clock. And, oh, no, I'm sorry. Malik Neighbors did go. I For a mm -hmm. second, I was like, Malik's there? This might change my thinking here. But Malik Neighbors went fourth to the Arizona Cardinals. All right, so Chicago would be on the clock at nine. Odunze is there. It just, man, I don't know. what What's your thought? If you're Brandon Bean right now, and again, this is going to cost you two firsts, a second, and maybe you get, you know, like a fourth or something like that back in some kind of swap. Is is that too rich? As good as, as I don't want to, you know, I don't want to slant my question to you too much. <laughs> I want your own thoughts on this. No, is, is that too steep of a price for you to pay in this draft? If Odunze is there for you, oh, it, it's so tough because I Odunze is sick for me, and just traditionally how I like to operate in the draft and what this team currently looks like yes, I think it would be too steep. And just, and again, I'm trying to like flush out 
no, you don't need to do that because you can just sit at 28 and AD Mitchell will probably be there. I've done this mock a thousand times. Like I'm trying to flush that out of my right, head. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if we're like really doing this. I just think there's a there's a good enough crop of talent at the receiver position that you can still get one at 28 or again, address it in later rounds and still be okay and get really good value. That's the part of the conversation too that I think gets left out. Like if seven or eight, wide receivers go in the first 27 picks somehow. That means a really, really good defensive lineman probably fell or a really good corner or a really good offensive lineman. And as much as like everybody's on the the cusp of the idea of like, oh, you got to like get Josh Allen weapons. I also like the idea of protecting Josh Allen. So like if Graham Barton fell because seven or eight wide receivers went in the first round, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to take Graham Barton at 28. Um, So I, I just, it is a little too rich for me. I don't think this team is, one stud rookie wide receiver away. I think it'd be fun and it'd be sexy, but I'd rather just build as much of a complete team as I can. I tend to agree with you. Quick side question too, based on what you said, uh, sure. Bruce Nolan in our first mock, he took a uh, Jax Bowers Johnson, the center mm. from uh, Oregon. You mentioned Barton as well. Um, do you get to a point where does Leal Collins signing affect anything that you're going to do on draft day? Oh, good question. Um, I think he's more swing tackle insurance than anything on the interior. Okay. Although I know he's got, you know, he played guard in 2015 and 2016 for Dallas or no 2014 and 15. One of those two. I don't remember. I tweeted it out. I should remember this, but he hasn't played guard since like 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. He's really been a tackle. He's had injury concerns. He's coming off that torn ACL and MCL in December of 2022. So maybe there's a chance he kicks inside more because some of his mobility and movement skills at tackle don't fly anymore. I do see him more as tackle insurance and overall depth. And also just with how I view JPJ and Graham Barton, for example, um, the signing of Collins would not dissuade me from taking either of them potentially um, at 28, just because of what you get this year. And then what you get going forward, like having a very good cost controlled interior offensive lineman for four or five years. And I also want to say that too. I know Graham Barton's listed as a tackle, I'm projecting him inside like a lot of people are. I think he kicks in. He played center early in his career at Duke. I think he projects to guard or center just with how he's built in his frame. But getting a really good offensive lineman for five years of control, considering how that market is starting to shift, look what, in, look what guards are starting to get paid now. And we already know what tackles are starting to get paid. So if you can have that cost control on the interior, you're protecting Josh Allen, you're helping the offensive line. Um, that's something that I, I would still go with and put on the table, even with the Collins signing, which – I think is more depth and insurance at some spots than it is like a necessary answer. Okay. So we stopped at pick nine with the bears to discuss the doomsday. We're not going to do that. The next stop I want to do is going to be pick 16 at Seattle because that's your, your first and second uh, territory draft value chart wise. Like for some people, if you want to know if Thomas is even going to be there, I know where you're going to go. You're not going to move up for that. If you're not going to do it for doomsday. And I agree with you for the record. Can and I ask with, a question? Let's just see if he's going to be there, though. So we'll we'll, we'll start can you do some nine. Okay. What? Cool. Oh no, then I was just going to say like I was just going to have you click a bunch of stuff at that Chicago pick and see what it was going to take. I was just going to watch everything oh. go off the board of oh. like you have to keep clicking squares. And yeah, clicking you got to keep going squares. And it's pretty good at doing that. All right, so Seattle would be on the clock right now. Um, mm. from any Johnny Newton went nine. Ah, uh, that's the that's man. He went before Byron Murphy in this mock. I I can't tell you, man. I've done like probably the last like 15 I've done. Newton has been there at 28 at probably 13 of the 15, like every mm -hmm. single time. And he always th it throws a wrench in my plans because I don't think there's a chance he could fall just because of the offensive line depth in this draft. How many quarterbacks are going to go? Brock Bowers, Quinion Mitchell, some corners that could also go um, in addition to Mitchell. There's a chance Newton could fall to 28. I don't think I never really thought he would, but there's a chance he could. I, but just in this mock, I am surprised he went to the Bears at yeah. nine, but that he's gone in general. This is going to we're going to have some fun options at 28 just by how this board has already fallen. Yeah, for sure. OK, so Seattle would be on the clock at 16. Again, this is your your first and a second territory. And just for the sake of it, we're not going to do it. But just let's see if we we're to take 16 and then trade 28 and say that round two next year. It says, okay. well, it says an 82% Oof. chance. So a first and a second. So let me ask you this. I don't want to be redundant with the receivers because I already know we wouldn't trade up for Brian Thomas this far. Is anyone, based on these first 15 picks, is there anybody that would at least give you 
pause. Somebody who you might say, ah, you know what? At least I, I would consider giving up a first and a second for at this point. I didn't see it until you scrolled. I thought Dallas Turner was still on the board, the edge from Alabama. Mm -hmm. I would consider that if he was sitting there at 16 and I know people are going to be like, that's not a receiver. What the hell are you doing? I thought he was still on. That was going to, we were going to about to sit here for about 10 minutes and discuss this because I thought he was on the board (laughs) and I was considering doing that. Yeah. If someone like that fell or actually isn't scroll up a little, Oh, Jared verse is still on the board. From yep. Florida State. Mm-hmm. Oh, this sucks, Pat. <laughs> oh. Well, you're the GM, by the way. So I also don't want to deal with everyone's crap of being like, I can't believe you traded up and it wasn't for a wide receiver. That's what I, you know, before we started this, that's what I said. <laughs> now look, Brandon Bean is going to not not make a pick because of fan reaction for 72 hours afterwards, but yeah, that won't be fun, man. <laughs> I can tell you, your oh. mentions on Twitter might not be fun on Wednesday if you were to to move that. By the way, I'm, side note, just for people, for shits and giggles who are following the quarterbacks where they go, Caleb Williams went one to Chicago. Drake May went two to Washington. Uh, Jaden Daniels lasted until pick six. He went to the Giants and J.J. McCarthy. Went to- then go off the board into the Raiders here at pick 13. But can you um can you go to can we see what players are still on the board real quick? Just so I'm not we can't see that's the thing I'm about right. that's what I thought. I thought yeah. that I was yeah, gonna... that's the P oh. that's the one glitch about PFF that I can't stand. You can't really you can't take a look at what's out there if you wanted to make the trade. I hate that about it, but I'm considering trading for verse, but again, just with how everything has fallen, now nah, I think we stand pat. All right, so no, we'll no stand. All right, so we'll stand pat. That did make you think, though. So Jared Verse was a strong possibility. All right, so our next stop I want to go to is going to be pick twenty-one. That is your first and your third territory. Like you'd be a third next year. Um, that would be the territory if you wanted to move up there. So we're going to go to. All right, so pick twenty-one. The Dolphins are. You know, I'm going to skip them because they would never trade with us. We're going to go to twenty-two. So we're going to twenty-two. The Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. This is your first and third territory. Um, since there, Jared, by the way, Jared versus they go pick 16. Yeah. That's the first uh, thing I looked at. Cause I thought he was yeah. still here again. And I was going to be like, Oh, <laughs> we kind of have to do this now. Yeah. Oh, um, no, okay. I know. Uh, uh, offensive lineman. Mims went off the board to, uh, the Rams at 19 Barden off the board to Miami at pick 21. All right. So you're sitting there at 22 probably would take a first and a third. Let's see even if that would even be possible. Uh, you, you will give a third <laughs> next year. Cause we don't have one to give this year anyway. It, wow, says it, it says said it would be accepted. So if you were to give up a first and a third, this would get you to, uh, to pick 2022. 20, you do have Thomas on the, Thomas Jr. on the board. Some other guys I'm sure that you like as well. Um, what are your thoughts here? See, now here's the – so scroll down a little bit just so we can see the Eagles. Like So it's Eagles. Okay, so Eagles, Minnesota, Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa, the Cardinals, and then the Bills. Just looking off of that right now, like I'm comfortable at 28 with multiple receivers. If you wanted to go Thomas, if you wanted to go worthy, if you wanted to go Mitchell, if you wanted to go Xavier Leggett. And I, I put this on Twitter yesterday, the combination of like receiver that you're looking for at the build. I, I, I think you need a true X wide receiver presence. Someone with that prototypical size and frame ability to get off the line of scrimmage, ability to win at the stem, separate at the catch point. You need someone in that realm of, just kind of put some of them into a bucket. Someone like that, Brian, Brian Thomas or A.D. Mitchell or um, Xavier Leggett, potentially Javon Baker, that type of size, frame, overall skill set traits. Xavier Worthy is not that. Xavier Worthy is more of a Z and a slot type receiver. Right. Now, I really like Xavier Worthy, and I like the idea of you take Xavier Worthy. Say, say I'm just making this up, but say we took him at 28. Well, then you come back and you take Javon Baker at 60. Then you got your true X. And then Xavier Worthy is just this fun, extremely fast, routed up receiver who can do a variety of things. Now you're building that basketball lineup within your wide receiver room where you, okay, you got your point guard, your two guard, your small forward, power forward, you start mm-hmm. building everything up. Whereas if we go, say we go AD Mitchell now, or again at 20, I'm making up AD Mitchell or Brian Thomas, then you're looking at like, okay, we're probably not going to be able to get Ricky Pearsall. We're probably not going to be able to get. 
Lad McConkey, like then you're looking at taking Malik Washington later. So it's kind of this pairing of the receivers that's in my head. So the trade up is still potentially intriguing, but I just think one of those four receivers that I named, Legat, Worthy, Mitchell Thomas, will be there at 28. And then I'm cool and just sitting there and I'm gonna I, I'd take one of them. All right. Sounds good. So we'll we'll make the next couple Watch picks. Them all- Oh, in my succession right now. <laughs> well, the next stop we're going to go to is going to be pick 25 with the Packers because that's your that's your first and a fourth, maybe throwing a seventh as well or six for a seventh swap, something like that, to be able to get that. So we will go to, uh, we'll let the next couple go. All right, so Green Bay's on the clock. And oh, this is falling beautifully for us, Pat. It Look really at- is. Cooley oh. McIntyre, your guy went to Dallas at 24. Man, Jason There's Latham. a lot of corners that, again, before the Diggs trade, McKinstry, Arnold, I like Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Even though he's smaller, I do think he plays bigger. Kamari Lassiter, corner from Georgia, has some long speed questions, but I like him. I like the, not necessarily in the first round, but I, I like the Missouri corners, Rake Straw and Chris Abrams drain. There's a lot of corners um, I like. I do think Kool-Aid McKinstry is kind of getting left over in the conversation or overshadowed by his running mate, Terry and Arnold, and then Quinion Mitchell from Toledo, who went eight in this mock, who just balled out this off season. Let me ask you, so let me ask you this question. So we're at the pick where I said, we would give up a fourth mm-hmm. and then maybe a six for seven swap among these receivers, because there's still a handful of them. They're all actually still left. None of them yes. just got yes. taken. Is there one among them that you like enough that you might give up a fourth and a seventh? Because, you know, you, you think the fall off maybe from the guy you like the most is, you know, it might be more significant than if you got to get the third or fourth guy that you want. Is there any one of these guys that you're like, mm, you know, this this guy might be worth the fourth and a seventh? Or are you just content to say, I'm just going to take one of them are going to be there and I'm going to go get my guy without having to give up shit? That's that second option. Just with how I have them tiered out and what their projection is as far as floor versus ceiling, I'm cool just sitting there and not having to sacrifice capital. Um, and also with it too, like Brian Thomas is is an example, like using him, like not to oversimplify it, but big guy runs fast, like six foot three, 210 pounds, runs a four, three forty, needs to improve on some of his stem work, needs to improve on some of his route tree and overall what he does. But you can take him this year for the bills and just be like, yo, just go play to your, your, your traits, just go be big and fast and play at the catch point and try and dunk on dudes and use your basketball background. Just do that while we build on the rest of your game. I think you can make a similar conversation like that for Xavier Leggett, be big, fast and athletic. We'll work on the rest of your game as we go. A.D. Mitchell, I think is a bit of a different one who I, his ceiling might not be potentially as high as Thomas, Although I do think it's in, in it's in the same conversation, but mm-hmm. I think Mitchell's floor is much higher as a rookie because he can win at all three levels. He can win underneath with his explosion and releases. He can win in the intermediate on inbreakers. He can win vertically with speed or with double moves or with playing big at the catch point. So there's like it's little pendulum swings and little dials that are turned down in different ways where you can make a case for all of them in different ways. But I put them in that same tier, which is why I'm cool just sitting at 28 because one of them is going to be there. Okay, and so we're going to go to 28, and we're going to make the pick. Uh, we'll get on the board now. Before I even re- re- read awesome. these off, though, I do want to point out, there's a lot of people out there who, as soon as that second-round pick next year for Diggs came through, you're like, well, they're going to move up in the first round. Mm-hmm. I, I said it before we started this mock. It's quite possible that they could package this year's two and that Diggs two for next year, and that could get you really high up. So if you're at 60 and you mm-hmm. really like a guy at 36, 37, you can use that pick, and that could get you up there in round two. Anyway, all right, so the Buffalo Bills are on the clock. Mm. Brian Thomas Jr. did go pick 26 mm. to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was going to say that's ridiculous, but what the hell do we know? There yeah, might be was, things out there that that we don't know about players, so that would be presumptuous. I was thinking me. that too, but also, like, I don't know. It's kind of cool to have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Brian Thomas, but also, yeah, I feel like that <laughs> wouldn't be the direction they necessarily go in, but, right. I mean... Eh. Well, actually, sc- scroll up on the board real quick. Sorry. Yeah, did Lot did Latu go? Yeah, right. Latu yeah, he Latu went pick 12. Right? He, went pick. 12. he was going to be my mid-first round pick, you know, or if he was here in the mid-first round, that would that be a guy you would consider? Would that be a guy you consider moving up for? I mean, you're not going to give up too like crazy amount, but is Latu a, a trade-up worthy candidate for you? 
if he's in the 20s, sure. Like if we're sitting there doing that Green Bay conversation or uh, anybody in the 20s, maybe even the 16 conversation with Seattle, I like Turner and Verse more at edge than I do Latu. Um, just with some of the injury stuff and some of the ways he plays the run. But if you're looking from a pure pass rush standpoint, man, the arm length, the moves, the arsenal, like how he builds everything together, the hand technique, he's a really fun dude to watch. So if he he could be there, like if we're sitting there at 25 with that option of what to give up to move there and he's still there, I, I don't know, that's, that's going to throw a wrench into my heart and my brain for sure. <laughs> All right, so receiver-wise, Mitchell is obviously there. Lamb McCockey's there. Um Xavier Leggett is there. Xavier Worthy is there as well. So there's a lot of receivers you mentioned are there. I feel like you're ultimately going to pick one. But before that, real quick, are there any non, again, if you want to light the world, you want to light Twitter on fire <laughs> right now, <laughs> are, are there the any, who would you, if you were going to not take, uh, just for the sake of discussion, a receiver in the first round, um, Chop Robinson, I don't know how you feel about him, but he is there. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson is there as well. Yes. In terms of interior alignment, Zach Frazier is there. Um, I'm trying to think any defensive tackles that might be there that are worthy of uh, potential first-round picks. I went to the wrong one here. Probably nobody fun at defensive tackle. The only first-round grades I have at defensive tackle are Murphy, um, who I have as my one, and then Newton, Newton, who I have. Yeah, Yeah, and Newton is my two. Everyone else in that defensive tackle, like the rest of the defensive tackle class, I think you can find useful pieces like I really like Michael Hall from Ohio State um I do like Dwayne Carter from Duke I like Tyler Davis from Clemson um there is usefulness within the rest of that group I just think a lot of it is more rotation based and Mm -hmm. even though like if you take Newton in the first for example he's going to be your defensive tackle three he's going to be on the field with Ed Oliver on the interior on third downs and known passing situation because he's a monster as far as pass rush. And he's a high level three, whereas the other guys I find rotational. So nobody for the interior would be in consideration for me here. Um, Some of the corners potentially, but just with what I like later, and this isn't even just me playing the board and knowing how the mock works, the corners that I think would be available later in round four I think I, I'm I'm fine sitting on corner. It would be Jackson Powers Johnson throws a bit of a wrench, so I would consider JPJ, but it's really between JPJ and the receivers. Although I do want you to click on the trade option um, and see what we were so, offered. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. So I was the one I was hoping for, the one that I love the most is if San Francisco or Baltimore is willing to trade with you, and then you can move into the late 30s or earlier 30s and then get a third round pick on top of it. So this one, and then I guess I'll pose this question to you too. Like, so we're sitting here, I know this, I'm kind of the GM here or whatever, but in collaboration, what are your thoughts here? Based on who's left on the board, are you sitting here wanting to jump for someone at 28 or because what's still there are, is a trade into like with Washington, like you just showed, you move back to 36. So you move back eight spots, but we can probably get 36 and I don't know, 78. And then that's interesting. Like, how does that, how does that float your boat? Um, I would say I would be nervous because I would say you want a receiver and you ran off four earlier that you liked and three of them are still there, but I got a feeling that a run is going to come like Detroit. I've heard other people say that like, like would be a great candidate to go to Detroit. Um, you got the Chiefs, so you just know they're going to take a receiver. So and Le- the and Ravens Leggett, need a receiver. Leggett and Worthy in these, again, not to play situation, never get past Carolina. And I also think that could be a realistic possibility yeah. at 33. Like 33, taking, Leggett, sure. t- t- taking Leggett with Carolina or taking Xavier Worthy at Carolina, considering how much they invested in the offensive line this year, but then have shipped out everybody basically who plays receiver. Like they need some for, Bar- for Bryce Young. I say I I would be more likely to want to make this pick. I want to get the receiver that I like the most out of them. I'd be more likely to package two twos to to get up and get a guy maybe in the late 30s that I really love if he happens to still be there, whether it's double dipping a receiver, whether it's getting an edge, maybe Frazier if you want that interior of the line, if they happen to last into the late 30s, or uh, you, you work on getting a third round pick, which uh, actually you really can't do that um, because like, you're already picking at the end of round two to begin with. So, yeah, I would kind of be out then on a 30. But I, I, me personally, I think I'd make this pick. I, I, Whatever receiver it is that you like the most, that's what I would do. So, okay, so now, <laughs> man, I really want that third round pick so friggin' bad. Um, 
And so now here, again, I'm, I'm wrestling with knowing how the mock works. I want to take Xavier Worthy here because mm -hmm. I know we can get Javon Baker at 60. Okay. Like, and then I'm like, sweet. I got my Z in my slot and I got a true X and I'm good, but I don't want to play the, I don't want to play the mock for the sake of the mock. Oh, uh, so now I'm, yeah, so but now, there's a good, there's, this is such a deep receiver class. I think there's a, like a legit, real, very real chance that Javon Baker would be there at 60 or you might, or you can move up. I mean, we got picks. You can move up from 60. Let's move up seven, eight spots and, and let's go make sure we go get them. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's on the board as well, too. So here's my, so I'll, I'll walk you through what I'm, or, or then like the idea of like, okay, so here's my thought now too, right? I like Ricky Pearsall. Mm -hmm. I think Ricky Pearsall, this isn't me playing the mock. This is just my thought. I think Ricky Pearsall would be there at 36 if we traded with Washington. And then you take Ricky Pearsall. I also really, really, really like Jermaine Burton from an on the field perspective. I just, his interviews are going to be so important and we don't have privy to that information because of some character stuff or off the field things, which are less than ideal for him. So part of me is like, okay, do we trade back? So let's, yeah, let's click some stuff. Say it's 36 offer or 28 and see if they'll give us, will they mm -hmm. give us 67? Just click, go down the, okay, no. All right. So click out of that, click 78. Okay. So we could get 36 and 78. And maybe we send them something later back to kind of increase the odds. It's only 61%. Like, say, but, I don't know, like 163, what would that do? Oh, wow, that bumps it up a lot. All right, so unclick 163, because I feel like let, let, I'm starting at the bare minimum. If we don't have to give up anything, we don't give up anything. Okay, so this we'll is, all, are we this is to intriguing to me, like, because I feel like, okay, Ricky Pearsall, his separation, right? His separation, his route running, how he operates as I, 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 I've said it since the senior bowl, like the phrasing I use for him is, is purposeful fluidity. He's fluid. He doesn't look that fast, but he ran a four four one, and you see him separate on tape. Everything he does is efficient and with a purpose. His movement. He's maybe not the most sudden guy, but he creates deception in his stems and with his routes. He makes things look similar. His ability to separate, track the football. Again, he's fallen into that like Z in that slot, and I find I find him to be a real quality dude. And then I still think we could take Javon Baker. Yeah. Ooh. Man, so that's like in my head of receivers. I, I like that could, thought. I, I do like that thought. Because again, I'm trying to, this isn't like, if we have to sit here, if everybody says, no, I don't want to trade. I'm just making this up. Like if everybody says, no, we don't want to trade. We want to sit here right now and make the pick. I would take AD Mitchell because I okay. value that X prototype. If we were playing the no trade mock, if I said, yes. if there's no trades allowed, pick 28, you're taking AD Mitchell. Yes, right now. Okay. And and that's what's in my head. Trading for or taking AD Mitchell or trading this pick and getting pick 78, which is really valuable. Like the, the, the meat of this class, I think the strength is on day two, those round two and those round three picks sure. and getting that pick 78. Because again, you're going right now, we have 68 picks between our second and third pick. We're going from 60 to 128. That's a super long time. It is. And there's a lot of dudes that are going to drop. I and agree. I'm trying to cobble this together. Now, again, it all depends on who you like. If you think Javon Baker sucks, everything that I've said right now is a horrible idea because, well, this guy sucks. So why do you want him anyway? I kind of want to make this trade based on yeah. what I've laid out. What do you think? I, I'm with it. I'm with it. And we'll try. So we're going to try to trade this pick, our 28th. We're going to try to get 36 and 78 from Washington. So let's offer it. And it was not accepted. Okay. So offer them. Uh, I don't want to start with 163 right. yet because I feel like they're being dicks. Offer them 204. Okay. 204. Let's offer them 204. 69. Nice. There we go. It was accepted. All right. So we're going to resume the draft. We're not on the clock anymore. We have traded just for people on the audio side. Everyone hates, hates, everyone hates me. <laughs> we just traded back. We traded pick 28 and 204. And now we have 36 and 78. And this is going to be fun. Let's see what receivers come off the board between 28 and 36. I could up. add, I could add, if it gets to pick, say, maybe 33, or no, it wouldn't be 33, 33, 34, no, 33, Panthers want a receiver. Yes. 34, you could always try to sneak back up a couple too, but. I, and also keep in, mind, keep in mind real quick. So what we saw earlier, New England took Harrison. So I don't think they're going to take a receiver at 34. The Cardinals took neighbors. I don't think they're going to take a receiver at 35. So we're looking at everybody between us. Mm -hmm. I think Baltimore takes one. 
Kansas City takes one, Carolina takes one, maybe San Francisco, but I don't think so. So I think three receivers go in the next four. And that's really what my hope is, that one of those initial four that I loved are still there at 36. Or again, I'm going to probably pull the trigger on Pearsall. I can't tell you how nervous and nauseous I am. (laughs) You know, I do want to point out too, when it comes to these mocks, it's kind of like, we can do a, and this is where mocks could be finicky because it's like we're thinking we move up, we move down. Where are 31 other teams in the simulator, they're playing the ball where it lies. You know, they're yes. getting their pick and they're not because you're right about what teams could take receiver. Also, with the same token, a team could leapfrog the Bills who want a True. receiver, but it Absolutely. can't happen in this mock. All right, so let, let, let's play out a couple here. Wow, right. McConkey so went. This one. McConkey was the one who went. Oh my God, McConkey went to Detroit, man. Wow. Can, real quick, as a quick as a quick aside, mm-hmm. the route running combination of Amon Ross St. Brown and Lad McConkey in that offense, and then you have the vertical stretch of Jamison Williams, and then you have Sam Laporta and Jam- oh, and Jameer Gibbs and that line. That's a super fun pick for Detroit, but also I got goosebumps because this really helped us out. It did. Uh, real quick, too. Let me ask you this. If, sure. if the Bills were to settle on Lad McConkey, mm-hmm. Good fit? Is that a good fit now with without Stefan Diggs? Is that a good fit for you? I actually think, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way, I actually think he fits well to kind of replace Diggs as that premier route runner in your offense, slot Z aspect. And again, I think McConkey has some X ability to him, although the upside is very limited. Like in X ability from the perception of he can win in the stem, he can get vertical, he has more long speed than he gets credit for. I don't want mm-hmm. him living there. He's another one who I put in that bucket of take Lad McConkey, get yourself Javon Baker, right? Take Xavier mm-hmm. Worthy, get yourself Javon Baker. You, If you're taking McConkey or Xavier Worthy, if you're taking someone in that Z or slot or non-traditional X role, that's fine. You just have to pair it with that more traditional or prototypical archetypical X from a skill set frame and trait standpoint. I like Lad McConkey um, a bunch, and I think – He's arguably the best route runner in this entire class. I think his ceiling as a true one is limited, but he's going to come into the league as an extremely high floor wide receiver too, because he's already a professional route runner before he's even stepped into the NFL. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson goes 30 to the Ravens. You can bank on him being a good lineman. They always produce him. Shocker a little bit. Uh, the Chiefs did not take a receiver. They took an offensive tackle. Yes. Jordan uh, Jordan Morgan from, I like him from, from Arizona. From Arizona. All right, so and I want to let people know this too. So we're, we're we're taking our sweet time here because I just think this is important. Day two will speed up a little bit. Once we get to day three, we're not going to be stopping this. We're going to get on yes. the clock. We're going to see who's the best available player. Don't want to keep Anthony Sorry. here. And I know and I talk about it. I'm also no, having is, fun. I'm having fun breaking this down. This is a good time. And it's I think this is highly educational for a lot of fans out there trying to learn about these prospects. All right, so we got three left. We're going to let it run here. Oh my God. It played oh, out. I thought Mitchell. Oh, oh wow. Mitchell is gone, but New this England, played New out England. as good as you can hope for. So Donnie Mitchell goes to the Patriots. Wow, he goes Harrison, to Harrison Pat- Harrison and Mitchell. They they take yeah, they, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Mitchell. Man, wow. Wow, and John I Robinson. John Robinson goes one pick before yeah. to the Cardinals. All right, so here we go, man. I mean, you do have Zach Frazier on the board, but I know we're not going there. Um, so you got yeah, you got Troy Franklin, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, your guy Xavier Worthy. Uh, no, they really get. Like, yeah. Now I kind of. <laughs> oh, just for just for giggles, click the trade button. <laughs> Let's look. Saints okay, no, forty-five. 45. Yeah, you ain't gonna. <laughs> you might get. You might get burned at the stake, buddy. If yeah, you that's back too far. Well, because now I'm still like, well, that Ricky Pierce Hall idea was sweet, but no. All right, so we're sitting there at thirty-six. I'm between the two Xavier's, Leggett and Worthy. Um. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's possible. Again, it is possible to make this pick. And maybe when we get to, like, say, 43, we take another look. And you might want to move up. Or if you think Javon Baker is going to be there at 60. That's, so that's what's in my head of thinking Javon Baker is going to be there. And I want to pair Worthy with Baker. Honestly, Leggett and Baker would be a fun pairing as well. So now it comes down to Xavier Leggett um, and Xavier Worthy. Let and me ask I, you a question. Yeah. Let's, make, let's just say you make this pick. And whichever one you take, whether it's Leggett or it's Worthy, 
would you consider? Would you give up pick 60 and that dig second rounder next year oh. to try to get up and pick back to back? If you were to pick a receiver now, trade up with the Chargers because they're looking at receiver, I believe. I don't think they took a receiver in the first round, did they? Or did they? No, they took Bowers. They took Brock Bowers. Okay. Well, regardless, maybe they would have taken a receiver in real life or whatever. But if 37 is the range that two twos could get you to, to get this, would you consider taking a receiver now, trading up two twos to go all the way up to 37 and maybe go get Leggett and Worthy? Or is that too rich for your blood? It's really fun. You're killing me in this one. This whole mock is killing me. I was not <laughs> anticipating any of this. This is throwing me for a loop. Man, that's really fun because, again, you get you get that X upside potential of Leggett. Like, I think Leggett, if he hits on all cylinders, if he hits his true ceiling, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at a reincarnation of A.J. Brown. Like, I hate making comps, but that's what it is. Like, that's sure. what the ceiling is, and that's ridiculous. Like, Oh, damn. All right. Time to do some stuff or get off the pot here. Um, <laughs> this is fun. I love it because I could tell that you are legitimately torn. Like, you're not playing for the cameras, folks. Anthony's no, I play, for, I play for keeps. I play for keeps, Pat. <laughs> this is real. I'm in. I'm at One Bill's Drive right now. I'm in the room. I got the phones working. This is life for. Okay. Xavier Worthy. Okay, we're going to draft Worthy. Before I hit the trigger and, and then we resume I'm the draft. So nervous. By taking Worthy, also kind of, it sounds to me what you're saying is by taking Xavier Worthy first, you're committed to coming back with that X receiver with your next pick. So you're right. almost, you sound like you're pretty much committed to double dip in at receiver immediately, which I'm, I certainly don't hate that. I'll just put that out there as well. Unless somebody ridiculous falls which i don't think so like I, so walking through my process right now my thought here is taking worthy taking baker and then going like bpa at a variety of spots that i like at pick 78 or something like that wow okay. troy franklin troy franklin right. went before like yeah interesting yeah, so troy franklin went at pick 39 to carolina so here's the scenario pick 40 just for the sake of it the washington commanders are again on the clock we've already traded back with them now if we were to try to trade up with them just for the sake of it, we would yes. try to get 40. We would give up 60 and we would give up a second rounder next year. It would wow. likely be accepted. So if you were to go up 20 spots and give up two twos, that's the deal. So you would, um, you would be able to get it. So if you, if you, if you love Legat enough, this is a spot to go get them. Um, or if there's any one non receiver out there, this is where you'd be able to get them. Or you, again, you roll the dice with Baker, or maybe you have a smaller move up for Baker before 60 a little bit, or you just see how the board falls. But just for informational purposes, this would get it done. This, If there's a player you want, you can trade up with Washington and you can go get them right now. Oh, uh, oh boy. Boy, boy, boy. That's actually kind of intriguing, um, the idea of pairing, the, the, going, going with the two Xaviers and you pair Worthy and Leggett. Mm-hmm. Baker. Uh, I'm a damn it. <laughs> this is fun, man. This is fun. I'm a uh, oh, let's stand pat. Stand pat. No pun intended. All right. We're, so we're going to stand pat. And we'll, we'll reserve. I'm looking forward. Watch him go 40 now. You know, am I allowed to right? swear here? Yeah, of course. Okay. He's still on the board. All Come right. On. Now, now we're up. Well, you know what? 48 is not really going to change. Well, we'd be pick 48. The Jacksonville Jaguars would be on the clock. Uh, the last handful of the batch of picks, Brandon Fisk went 40. That's the pick that wow. we were considering. Darius Robinson, by the way, Joe B from the Athletic. Had him in his first mock draft anyway. That Things have changed. But I like Robinson a lot. Trigan name from uh, the Raiders. He goes to the Raiders, I should say. All right, so for pick 48, uh, let's say we wanted to get into. Yes, that was saying. Start clicking some day three crap. Oh, my bad. Um. I like it. Hold on. 33, only a 19% chance. Uh, what happens if you pair it with 160 or 163? 160. Oh. All right. So, uh, you know what? Now, this is something, even if it's Javon, I, I feel like this, Anth, if you're really high on Javon Baker, even though Legat's out there too, 
But like, even if he was gone, Leggett, and you were high on Javon Baker, I kind of feel like you're getting into the territory where if you really want that X and that's yeah. your guy, yes. I feel like this is territory where this is worth giving up that draft capital, if you agree with that. I I do, and I don't think this... Again, maybe we we'd have to. You have a fifty three percent chance right now, according to PFF, uh, for mm-hmm. the for the audio listeners of you know we move up twelve spots from sixty to forty eight, and we also give them pick one thirty three this year and pick one sixty. Mm-hmm. I don't hate that because then you're sitting there, okay, and then you have forty eight, seventy eight, one twenty eight, one forty four, one sixty three, two hundred and two forty eight. So you're not sacrificing all of your quantity, and you're still getting good quality. Um, I'm could. I would consider this honestly for like either or I'm strongly considering it now for Leggett just because I think, man, like the speed and athleticism profile that you've added to your receiver room with the two Xavier's being Leggett and worthy, like that's extremely enticing and extremely fun. Oh man. I can't believe he's still falling. He's never my, there. That, the 30s. That's, that's my thing. When I'm trying to, again, who, what, who are we to say what's realistic and what's not, but my mindset right now is I just don't see Leggett realistically being there at 48. I do I see Javon Baker being there at 48. I, I don't see Leggett being there at 48, though. That's my whole thing. But yeah, that, he is and there. And that's like my thought, too. Like where you're kind of going We're into not that cheating, situation yeah. of, of um, we're not cheating the system. We're no. not, it's not like we're cheating. <laughs> no, we're not. And what do you oh. think? We want to put ourselves in position to to give it a look, see what they say. God. What no, I want to stay. I want to stand pat. I'm rolling the dice. I think Baker's going to be there at 60, and I want Baker. All right, let's let. Well, let's just go up. a couple at a time here. Pearsall went. Burton. Burton went. Penix went. 51. All right, so 52. The Rams are still on the clock here. I'm trying oh to be God. careful. Oh my God. I'm trying to be careful to not click the wrong buttons. And next thing you know, both Dude. guys get drafted. All right. So look, man, we're at pick 56 now. Dallas is on the board. Uh, pick 56. And your guy, Leggett is still there. I know. So, it, not, now, football, now my football went 48, by the way, where we consider <laughs> moving up to Jacksonville kept the pick and they took, took Ricky Purcell. Now yeah. I'm, now I'm fearful of Leggett and Baker both being there at 60. And then I have to pick one. Ha. <laughs> That is true. Well, let's find out. <laughs> let's go two more here. We'll go Dallas and Tampa. I think they both could be there. Um, oh, wow, Chris no Jenkins. Ways. Man, Chris Jenkins is a good guy. J- Jalen Polk goes 57. What is going on with this draft? All right, well, we're going to let Houston. But also, I could see that happening a little bit. Maybe maybe people aren't. It could happen. May- yeah, maybe they're not a fan of the one-year production for Xavier Leggett. Maybe mm-hmm. they think the timeline isn't ideal necessarily for him. Um, he also is 23 years old already. So maybe people don't like the age combined with the one year of production. Maybe there's that combination of ceiling minus floor plus age. Um, and also too, like part of the reason I like him more for the bills is because of, I think the fit works for what they need in creating that basketball lineup at receiver. But also I think it works for his career trajectory. He needs sure. time to again, work on the technical refined aspects of playing wide receiver. And you can do that in an offense where Dalton Kincaid is probably option one. Curtis Samuel is factored in there. Khalil Shakir is factored in there. If we're talking about the run game mix from the past, James Cook is arguably option two because of what he's going to get touches as a receiver plus touches as a running back. So the expectation and the workload mentally and physically isn't too much for Leggett as a rookie, you can just let him go be a baby AJ Brown in some ways with his traits while he's, while he continues to build on the rest of his, you know, tools in the toolbox. And I really think both him and Baker are going to be there at 60 because there's no way Houston's taking a receiver at 59 right now. <laughs> I, I really Ooh, highly doubt it. I have an idea. What if we, uh, what if we try to trade with Houston for Stefan? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see who they do take though. All right. Well, they, so took they, 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 they took a receiver. They took Yann Coleman. I don't know. Maybe their system's not updated enough yet with uh, Drew Calpertick. By the way, they got Noah Brown, too. That's a guy that I really wanted the Bills to sign I before guess. free agency started, man. Especially for the cost. Like, he was someone yeah. we were looking at from the size, frame, and skill set standpoint. It was like, this could be an X, you know, prototype, not necessarily high end, but he gives you that niche need on the depth chart and from a role perspective. And yeah, for what he costs, like, he went back to Houston for cheap, but. I mean, I get it. Like he probably likes, I also think too, from a player standpoint, like 
I hate moving. Maybe players feel that way. Like, I don't want to move and uproot my life. I just want to stay where I am. Houston's cool. Um, let's take Xavier Leggett here at 60, unless you have some other thoughts. No, I mean, I, I, I kind of stunned he's been there. You know what, though, Ant? I remember. All this could happen. Cordy Glenn, I remember. He was going to be a first-round pick. He fell to the Bills in the oh, second round. Oh, Cyrus Torrance. Oh, Cyrus, Cyrus Torrance, Torrance last year. Boogie Basham, I saw some him in some first-round mocks, and he fell into the Bills, unfortunately, at now. But, all right, so we're taking Xavier Leggett. No doubt about this that. This is fun. Uh, we don't even need to do the rest. I don't care. We're out. <laughs> yeah, at this point, um, yeah, we're just going to. Oh, oh Baker went to the Jets. All right, right, so, so the Bills are on our clock because we picked up a third round. Yeah, Javel Baker goes to the Jets at 72. I was uh, going to tell you if he's still there at 78, we're taking him. We're just going three straight receivers. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. Uh, Braden Trice, uh, he went to who, to Arizona. All right, so the Bills are on the clock. They got that third rounder that we picked up. I think Blake Corum for the Raiders picked before. Might have been the first running back off the board. I could be wrong. I think but so too. Yeah, I agree. I think he might be. All right, what position? Where, where are we looking right now? So we've uh, we went receiver the first two rounds here. So now I'm looking at interior defensive line. I'm looking at edge. I'm looking at corner. Um, I'm also considering safety. Now I really like Michael Hall. I kind of mm-hmm. want to make Michael Hall the pick. Um, but just pull up just for for giggles. Pull up um the corners with it as well and the edges, please. Okay, so we'll go to corners. Okay, nobody who I love enough. Okay. Okay, cool. What, what was the other position you said? Edge. 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 Okay, now I'll say Gabriel Murphy is the only one in consideration there. All right, so we're sitting there at 78. I kind of want to get cute and trade back, just but I just think we're going to get into a realm of unrealisticness and nonsense. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, I want to go Michael Hall, defensive tackle from Ohio State. Um. Roti's going to be that rotational three behind Ed Oliver. Quickness, juice, speed off the snap, uh, lateral explosion, penetrating style. Um, I think he pairs well with how their interior looks right now, where it's Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, Austin Johnson really as the backup to Daquan. And then you factor in Michael Hall, who's just, I think, in a rotational role, has the opportunity to cause some real havoc um, on the interior of your offensive line or uh, okay. for, for opposing off, interior offensive line. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go back to the Bills pick of Michael Hall Jr. So that's the pick in round three, defensive interior guy from Ohio State. By the way, I'm a Notre Dame guy, and not last year, the year before, I Michael Hall Jr. just absolutely annihilated Notre Dame. I didn't even know who he was before the game. I'm like, did somebody block this? Oh, the, the one this guy? year? No, two years ago. Oh, two years ago. That's okay, oh, my God. I was like, can somebody block this fucking guy? I he remember even, saying he, that to the TV. He even <laughs> had one this year. Um, Joe Alt, because I was watching the tape this year against Notre Dame, Joe Alt tries to cross face on him, and he hits him with a swim. And granted, like, dudes get beat from time to time, but he hits Alt with a swim and drops Joe Alt because he beats him so quickly. And I think the world of Joe Alt. And when I saw that happen, I was like, I perked up even more. And then you watch the other clips. I I really do like that pick of Michael Hall, especially given what this team needs, how he fits as that number two, three tech behind Ed Oliver. And again, you're going to have him for four years. Like that's a really awesome pairing there. Um. All right. So here's what I wanted to do. We're going to go through like, I'm going to scroll through some of the guys that have been picked since then. Um. By the way, m- maybe my favorite mock is Miami forfeit in their pit. I was going to make that joke too. Yeah, that's a real shame. Oh, how, how um, unfortunate. All right. So, any of the guy, Trey Benson, running back, goes to Tampa Bay. I was just thinking if there's any like corners or safeties that you like, and it doesn't look like any of them have been getting gotten picked since I like, we did. I, I, know the, the, I know the 40 times scared people. I still really like Cam Kitchens from Miami. Um, I just think with based on how the board shakes out, like we could have taken Kitchens at 78. Mm-hmm. I just think the need for that rotational three tech given what, what what the bills need in 2024 and really still going beyond with how the defensive line is the engine for the defense. I thought it was more important. Well, let me ask you this. So the bills still have seven picks left in this draft. We're mm-hmm. at pick one ten with the chargers. The bills next pick is scheduled to be one twenty eight. safety corner, probably safety. Is there somebody on the board where it's like, this might be a good spot to trade up. Go get, go sure. get your safety because you're talking 18 more picks before you're on the clock. So if there's a safety that you like, again, the Bills still have a plethora of picks, man. We still got like we scroll still got up a little bit. Picks. That's true. We do have a book. Scroll up a little bit. Vaki went. Okay, so keep going. 
bullet keep going so keep going keep going i just want to make sure okay so cole bishop is there safety mm -hmm. from utah who i think is a nice like swiss army knife piece on the back end i really like malik mustafa kitchens is gone by the way yep kitchens went yep. to baltimore which is a really cool pick for them that fits mm -hmm. in their d um Huh. Bishop could be a potential option here if you wanted to like move up and get that safety piece. Also, could add you some like nickel depth and value as well. Um, let's I see like what it would take. Let's see what sure. it would take if we were going to move up. So, pick one sixty, oh, one sixty three. Ah, I feel like that's not a not a bad two hundred. No, so that's what it would take. It would take pick one twenty eight or one sixty three. Do you want to click on two hundred? Click on two hundred. Only an okay, yeah, nowhere close. Damn, I was hoping so, it was going to be like 49. Uh, I was going to be like, let's try so, it. Uh, so 128 and 163 will get you up to 110, and you can have a pick of a pretty good safety there or somewhere else. Kind of feel like this is a uh, potential with all the picks left. This might be a good trade-up spot. This is a good trade-up spot if you really like got that guy. I, I like Malik Mustafa a bunch, and so mm -hmm. I kind of want to sit because I think he can be had somewhere between 128 and 144. Okay. Um, with those picks that we have again in succession, we're looking at 128, 133, 144. So I kind of want to stand pat just with how much I do like sure. Mustafa. All right. Let's, uh, well, let's get, let's go at least go another eight, nine picks. Let's see. No safety. Ah, Bishop Cole, went at 118. Cole, Cole Bishop. Yeah. Cole Bishop, 118 that is Seattle Seahawks. By the way, shout out my guy, Cam Hart, uh, corner from Notre Dame, goes to the Colts Indeed. at 117. Oh, oh so Tyke, just, damn, Tyke Smith is another one I like. He went bastards. Uh, okay, so all right, so the Bills are on the clock here. The safe, other safeties are still there. Malik Washington, a receiver. I hear a lot about him, by the way. He, he's fun. He's fun. He's he's little, ridiculous. He went to Houston. I mean, come on. BFF's screwing this shit up. This is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, the Houston yeah. took two wide receivers like that, well, one being king. Let's pretend it's somebody else. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. So, so Malik Mustafa is there. Yep. Um, I feel um, like... Go, go yeah. to... Go, go to the corners... Corners. Kalen Carson's there. Yep. Oh, come on. Uh, Adden is there. I like Carson. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Um, look at Edge. Mm, Muhammad Kamara is there. Grayson Murphy, Nelson Cesar. Kamara's got some stuff that I like. I don't think he fits the archetype of the Bills. Um, oh boy. Let's do go go back to the just the big board in general. No, no positional filter. I know it's not a huge need, but with his contract coming up, we'll see what happens. I kind of want to take Christian Jones, the tech the, the tackle from Texas. Okay. Um I liked him at the senior bowl with his movement and his punch ability. Um, and just, again, I like I, if Spencer Brown had an improvement last year. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I don't know. Maybe he potentially prices himself out, or even if he doesn't, Christian Jones is a nice, like depth and swing tackle option for you sure. for the next several years. And I never have a problem going with offensive line. Um, uh, and we didn't go offensive line earlier, but then you've got, uh, go to the the interior offensive lineman real quick. Interior offensive line. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I want to see who's left there. Three Michigan Zinter. guys at the top. Yeah, I like Zinter. I feel like we can grow. Which, by the way, for people listening, um, the Bills are on the clock at one twenty eight, and we're going to be picking again at one thirty three as well. Yes. So we've got like this is where this is where I think a lot of the moving and shaking from a conversation standpoint happens because mm -hmm. then it becomes like you're in this situation where sure you could go in a literal multitude of ways because there's all this kind of piece and things together. Um because they brought in Collins, but again, Lyle Collins is on a one year deal. He's had injury concerns. Oh boy. Let's take Christian Jones, tackle from Texas. All right, Christian Jones, tackle from Texas, is the pick at 128. We're coming right back at 133. Ah, uh, well, none of the guys that you discuss, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it seems like, are still there. So, all right, so the Bills are on the clock again. Pick 133. Okay, um, let's go uh, ba -ba -ba. pull up that uh, corner list again. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to figure out a combination of 
the three guys I want are Kalen Carson um, from Wake Forest, Malik Mustafa, also safety from uh, Wake Forest, and uh, Zach Zinter, who the guard I like from Michigan. Yeah. Uh, now I'm now I'm looking at like my notes, and so Zach Zinter <laughs> had injury pieces. Yeah, because he broke his leg um, against Ohio State, but. Oh, I'm trying to, th- I'm now, now I'm trying to play the board and figure out who goes where and who does what. Um, I still do believe in that corner piece. I would like to take. And then will Mustafa be there? Go to the safeties again, real quick. Sorry. Braid Mustafa. Okay. So Mustafa's probably going to go. Move on. Our- yeah, it's possible. Um, click the interior offensive line one more time. Uh, he's at oh, is Zinter good? I also don't mind Javon Cohen, but he's a little later. Um, okay, let's take Kalen Carson, the corner from Wake Forest. Okay, so we are going to draft Kalen Carson and corner from Wake Forest, Premium and position. this is going to be pick one thirty three. Now, do you want to try to? Let's wait till round now. So I keep calling on the Washington Commanders. Like, <laughs> you know, like, right every time you love it, begging us to do business with them. All right, so Carson, we took with pick one thirty three. Um, if you like that safety, you like Mustafa. Five. I picks. do. You want to go get him now? You want to make sure you get him because I want Mustafa and I want Zinter. Let's see if we can offer. One, it looks like two hundred pick two one forty four and two hundred for one thirty nine. So you're giving up a pick two hundred and move up five spots right there. What happens if you offer them one sixty with two hundred? One sixty with two hundred. It says Dang. it's likely to be accepted. What about one sixty again? Just because I'm like this. What happens if you offer one sixty and two forty eight? Wow, that even has a forty nine percent chance. Want to try it? Yeah, I, mean, I feel like it's worth it. We'll offer to trade. So we're let's see. Nope, they okay. said no. So now we have to go to uh, we lose out on 200. That's the true fine. businessman is Anthony Brohaska. Yeah, okay. let's do that trade. Let's all right. So 160 and 200. Let's see. All right. So that's what it went through. So we have traded for a second time with the Washington Commanders. Thank you, Washington. Beautiful business. Uh, the bills are on the clock, and you discussed must um Mustafa. So that's who we're gonna take, right? Or you take uh, it center. I'm just trying to I'm trying to figure out which one is more likely to go in the next little bit. Mm-hmm. Um because I also don't mind Bo Braid, but I like Zinter a bunch. Click out uh, X X out of the safeties. Even if Kamara fell. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's look at da da da. I've seen Christian Boyd going like the third and fourth rounds of some mocks, but we've already addressed, we've addressed this too. Yes. And he's also more of like a big body. I also haven't, because he plays in Northern Iowa, like his tape has been scarce. So I can't speak to his skill set. And I don't want to speak to somebody who I haven't actually like evaluated and be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, Timmy so and so said he was good. Mm -hmm. Um, Pull, I'm sorry, one more time. Just pull up into your offensive line. Now I'm trying to just look at the teams ahead of us and figure out which one is better to fall. Um, now after this pick, there'll be three, there'll be four pick, four teams picking before the bills go again. So we're going to make a pick now, four picks and then the bills. Okay. Let's take, I'm going to leave it up to you on this one. It's between Zinter and Mustafa. I want, I would ideally like both. You pick which one we take. God, it's really tough. Um, you know, I, I, I I think because the way you've talked about Mustafa, I just feel like I would take my chances with him. I I, I, I would, I probably would want him. I think that's a position where maybe in the next couple of years, you, you could get a starter from there. I mean, mm-hmm. good at guard as well too, though. I've heard more things about Mustafa. Let's just put Mustafa it that way. Is, he, he hits like a freight train. He detonates on contact. I think he, he has more range than he gets credit for as far as, mm-hmm. um, as a post safety or in too high looks like I do think again, like he has to get a little more refinement overall in terms of coverage pieces and his eyes and it, but his processing is sound. It's just not necessarily the fastest, but I think 
getting used more in those ways will help him to adjust. He gets used as like a spy against athletic quarterbacks. They'll blitz him off the edge. He's just a really fun heat seeking missile. He makes me think of big, big time discount here because I don't want people to get this comp too much in their head. He makes me feel like a bargain bullet Bob Sanders from the Colts, who wow. I thought was, was again, former defensive player of the year. That's super high praise, but just to put in someone's mind of like a shorter, stockier, fast bullet type of safety. He jumped out of the gym with his testing. He's explosive. Yeah, let's take Mustafa, and then I'm going to hope that people are scared off from Zinter's broken leg, and he's there at 144. All right, so we also could take Mustafa now, which we're going to. And again, there's four picks for the Bills. Maybe if he's still there after two picks, maybe we could get 144 and 248 and get both guys. Let's see. Let's draft him now. All right, so we took Malik Mustafa at pick 139. 140, 141, nothing. Two teams in front of us. Roll the dice. We roll the dice. All right, we're rolling the dice. Dang, and cool. there it is. Take this Zach Zinter. Cool. Let him let him come back from that broken leg. Let him start to heal up a little bit. We don't need much now, but I think the long-term piece, the physicality coming from that run-heavy, well-coached offense at Michigan, I like it. I do too. And that's two offensive linemen that we've drafted, man. So, uh, all right. I mean, so, you can, you, you can never go wrong. Like, and I know, again, people needs change, but you can never go wrong drafting offensive linemen in corners. Like, you're Absolutely. always going to need like that piece. Absolutely. We've done Ooh. plenty of both this draft. All right. So, just I, to put a recap on what I want to make sure you can scroll to see what we may have missed. Brian Allen, a running back, 149 to Cincy. He's cool from what? From uh, uh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tyler so Davis. Tyler Davis, who I like, defensive tackle from Clemson. He went to the Rams. I tell you who I like at 163, even though it's not a huge need. From Notre Dame, J.D. Bertrand. I like him on tape. I liked him at the Senior Bowl. He's right there, ironically, at the top of the board already. Like, uh, Bo Braid is also a fun safety. I don't know if I want to double dip on safety now, though. Mm -hmm. um, I also like Dylan Lobby from New Hampshire. Uh, click um, Let's see what running backs are on the board. Running backs and edges. Uh, running backs are uh, Johnson, Vidal. I like Vidal. I like Jace McClellan. I like Lava. I like Isaiah Davis, actually. I like Rasheen Ali. Okay. So By the way, I got to give a shout out here. Deshaun Fenwick from uh, Oregon, Oregon State. State. Yeah. My son played football with him in high school. He went to oh, that's cool. played on the same football team. He actually went to South Carolina, eventually transferred to uh Oregon State. So I'm going to hope, obviously, that that nice. kid gets drafted somewhere. If this was my own selfish mock draft, Take I would him. draft him in the seventh round just for the hell of it. Anyway, I'm a big ass dude too. But anyway, all right. So go ahead. Go to uh, no, I like that. Go to uh, go to Edge. That's the only thing we haven't addressed that I I don't completely. Uh, Jalen Harrell being there at Edge from Michigan. Uh, I kind of want to take a running back, but I just feel like that Edge rotation can still use juice and bodies. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't love everybody still there. Solomon Bird is a name who's who's rang some bells. Um, but again, I don't and maybe this is just me like helmet scouting, but I just don't love like anybody from the USC defense with how rough they've been at times. Um let me take a look at hold on. I want to see Jalen. Again, I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. I want to see Absolutely. Uh, the archetype fit for uh, his arm is a little short. He's 6'3, 250. Arm length is 33 and a quarter, which is 39th percentile. But he's athletic because again, everything is always like that's why I initially Darius Robinson fits what the Bills like at edge long, mm -hmm. strong power, compression rusher. Bang, like that's what they like in a nutshell. I do think they need like edge again is that sneaky spot where I like right now you're sitting going into the year and it's, it's Von Miller, Greg Rousseau, AJ Epinesa and Casey two hill. Casey two hill is built to be a four and he's a motor guy. We still don't know what we're getting for Vaughn and you still need depth and competition. Let's take, um, Oh, and then McGregor's there. Uh, let's take Jalen Harrell just because I've seen more. I can speak more to him, so I feel confident. Let's take yeah, Jalen Harrell. All right, so we took Jalen Harrell for Michigan and Edge. And now we got one more pick, and it's all the way at 248. While this is loading and getting there, let me ask you real quick. At the beginning, we talked about mock drafts and what you can get from them and things you can learn. And kind of feel like one of the things I'm learning about just doing these mock drafts, having guests like you and like Bruce on is it feels like 
with receiver. You can get him all different levels. In terms of 2024 help, obviously you could take one in the first round, of course. You can get day two guys who can step in and play, maybe even early day three, fourth rounders you can help right away. Feels to me, when it comes to the edge position, really top heavy. Like you got to mm-hmm. get one of those first three or four guys. Mm-hmm. It seems like the drop off is a lot more significant. And if you're not getting an edge, like say to the maybe third round or anything later, it doesn't feel like that's going to be somebody that you're going to be, be able to really count on as a rookie, at least anyway, to, to contribute much to the team. Don't mean the yeah. guy can't be a gem. We see mm-hmm. all the time every year, the bills draft guys in the late rounds that turn out to be studs. Just mm-hmm. saying, you know, immediate help wise, doesn't feel like that part, that position edge is going to be something you could count on if you don't get one early. No. And like my, my hope there, right. Is if somehow like you're the only way you're taking an edge is if you get one of the top three or again, I still don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Darius Robinson goes at 28 just because he's an ar- archetype fit, but I don't mm-hmm. really see it now with the pieces of wide receiver. Right. So unless you're getting one of the, unless one of the, the top three fall being Turner verse or, or lot you're probably not taking one at 28 second round someone would really have to fall like Braswell has to fall or Robinson has to fall for you to even consider it. Like I'm the ones I'm really looking at, like um, he went before we could go at 128, but Xavier Thomas, um, the edge from Clemson, I like some of what he does on tape. So like, that's a possibility, but you nailed it. Yeah. If you're not getting one of those name dudes early, it's really, it's slim pickings after that. Like there's a significant drop off. I don't love the edge class overall. There's guys who got like little bits and pieces and Muhammad Kamara might be one that when people watch or listen to this episode, are like, oh, I can't believe you didn't go with with him. Like, but I just didn't love what I saw on tape too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of nailed it. Sitting here at um, 248, I like Rasheen Ali, or who he, I was hoping one of the fun running backs who I liked would still be here. And I like Rasheen Ali. I, I like what he did at the senior bowl. I like his movement. Um, <clears throat> juice, contact balance, some, some power for what kind of he can be. Um, had a couple really nice one-on-one reps in terms of route running out of the backfield, shaking linebackers at the senior bowl. Um, again, got speed and lateral agility, the cuts that he can make red running backs, no disrespect. Like you can find gems everywhere. And so I'll take a guy cool pair him with, uh, um, James Cook, and there you go. Wow, Xavier Worthy got us a D plus. Oh, yeah, I was they gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off the results what's, of GM Anthony Brohaska's what, mock draft. What's PFF, crazy with not that, a fan. What's crazy with that, real quick, is most of the mocks I do, he goes by like pick 40, which so I've never yeah. understood, like, how was this guy ranked in the 60s for you, but he consistently goes in the 30s, like, I which I never understand, but I the gradings don't matter. But I am surprised we got a D plus. Okay, <laughs> all right, so. To recap here, uh, especially like I said, on the audio side, if you can't see this, we traded down. Everyone in the world thinks the Bills are going to trade up to get a receiver. GM Anthony Brohaska trades down. Washington Commanders uh, got the pick. So the Bills got 36 and 78 for 28 and 204. With the Bills' first pick in the second round, we took Xavier Worthy, the receiver from Texas, Round two, we sweated it out. We 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 waited it out. Plenty of trade scenarios. Didn't do them. Xavier Leggett falls in our lap. I know Anth was Javon Baker, you know, very much pro him, but you just you, we couldn't pass on Leggett. Um, Michael Hall Jr. I think this is a great pick at a third round, by the way. Uh, Michael Hall Jr., defensive interior guy from Ohio State. Only got us a C minus though. Only got us a C minus. That's some bullshit, man. <laughs> BFF's hating on us. Uh, fourth round, two picks. Christian Jones, a tackle from Texas. And uh, the corner, Kalen Carson from Wake Forest. Round five, uh, we took Malik Mustafa, a safety also from Wake Forest. Then we traded up with, again, the Washington Commanders. Um, we moved up from 160 to 139, and we gave up pick 200. And we took uh, Zach Zinter, the guard from Michigan. Then we took, by the way, we ended up with uh, three fifth-round picks. All right. And then also around five, Jalen Harrell, uh, the edge from Michigan. And then with our last pick, Rasheen Ali, a running back from Marshall. Yeah, PFF overall grade B minus here, man. What are your thoughts now? You know, we did this in real time. Now you're looking at it. What are your thoughts right now? If this were how it plays out, how do you feel about it? How do uh, how does Bill's Mafia feel about it? The grading is always funny to me because I had a couple like A's. 
that I post and people are like, this mock sucks. And it's always like, oh, it's just so funny. But some people will be like, oh, these grades are amazing. And then it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> I really like it. My, my hope, yeah, my, my dream scenario for the Bills, I really want a third round pick. Mm-hmm. So a dream scenario for me for the Bills is trading from 28 into the 30s, ideally the mid 30s, kind of where we went to, where we went to 36. But whether it's <clears throat> to Baltimore in the early 30s or San Francisco or Washington, kind of getting somewhere in the early to mid 30s, getting a round three pick back with that, and then still being able to get Worthy or Mitchell or Thomas or Leggett or again, even McConkey. You just have to make sure you pair him with an X later in the draft, like potentially Javon Baker or some piece like that. So I really like from, you know, everybody's always talking about helping Josh Allen. I think you did that with Worthy and Leggett with, with this mock. Um, I know some people are kind of hit or miss on Worthy. I am not. Um, I know the weight he ran at at the combine of 165. I don't think that's his playing weight. He plays more in the mid 170s. And then instead of running a 4'2", 140, probably runs like a 4'2", which is still lightning quick. Uh, tough after the catch, speed, elite ball tracking. Um, I know he's got drops issues, but he doesn't have real drops issues deep. He's not going to be a contested catch guy. He's not going to be this ball winner downfield, but he's a separator, a vertical, a vertical threat, a space creator, a better route runner than he gets credit for. And then we paired him with the ball winner, the guy who floats in midair, the guy who can dunk on dudes, baby AJ Brown, Xavier Leggett, 6'1", 220 plus, runs a 4'3", athleticism and juice. So we helped Josh Allen with the first two picks, and then we helped him again with Christian Jones and getting some long-term depth or potential starter tackle option for 2025, depending on what happened with Spencer Brown. Sandwiched in that, Michael Hall, like, like you said, I, I think like we that was a really good pick in the third round, the juice that he offers, and that rotation. You now have a really fun top four on the interior with Oliver, Daquan, uh, Michael Hall, and Austin Johnson. I like Kalen Carson for the depth at corner this year. I think he can be a CB3 or a CB4 this year. Potential CB2 for you next year or CB3 next year. Never hurts to take corners. I like Mustafa a lot. I have through this whole process. I think he could be your starting safety next year or potentially fit in in a pitch. Just want to get him more used to the match coverage aspect and processing those pieces. But again, this safety class is not ideal. Um, so I'm okay taking a dude with explosion and athleticism. It hits like a freight train. Zach Sinter solid on the interior coming back from that broken leg, which, which is why that value is there. Jalen Harrell compete for a depth spot off the edge. See what you can get. And then Rasheen Ali, who I think could be your RB two next year or a really fun gadget piece this year is RB three. And then you have him under cost control for 40 years. If he makes the roster and you go from there, I'm going to give you a hot take, man. This okay. has been one of one of maybe my favorite mock draft that I've seen so far. Oh, that's Honestly. awesome. Thank you. I, I, I truly mean that too. I'm not just saying it because you're on the show. I, I, I legit mean it. I'm thinking from a fan perspective now. And I'm like, how could you not like this? You got two receivers, not one, two receivers, two receivers, by the way, in real life, I wouldn't be shocked if both of them are gone by pick 36. Correct. And we got both of them starting at pick 36. You got your day three, you got your third rounder, which we didn't have going into the draft. And you kept your second rounder next year. We didn't give that up. So, I mean, you got your your one and your two twos next year, along with a lot of cap space. So, Brandon Bean, you do a lot of shit in 2025 as well. Um, I I think this is really set up. The only thing I would say, and no mock is obviously going to be perfect, but I feel like before the dig straight, at least anyway, I thought maybe getting an edge early was going to be kind of a a priority. But you know what, Anth? I'm good. When you got cap space, you got draft capital. Mm. Roll with what you got this year. And, and, and see that, that's it too. Like the way the board fell, I would like to have addressed edge. I also didn't think I didn't come into this thinking we were going to double dip at receiver necessarily with our first two picks. If right. we did, I thought it would be okay. Maybe <clears throat> Javon Baker at 60 paired with somebody early, but I really didn't think that was going to happen. I thought like our first receiver off the board, everybody was going to kill me was either going to be Mitchell in the first round and like Malik Washington at 128 or something, or Javon Baker at 60 and then getting another receiver with the third round pick we traded for. I didn't expect a double dip in one and two, but it's just the way the board fell. Like if the board had fallen differently to your point, I really would like to address edge. That's my one gripe with this. But again, I don't think the board just, and this happens in real life. The board just didn't fall your way. Like it just, it didn't work out for us. My thought process is recently as a week ago was, well, this is Vaughn Miller's last season. You got to get a guy in here now. Not necessarily true. You got four deep right now. Plus, by the way, free agency's not over. I mean, there's post-June. Mm-hmm. The Bills signed Leonard Floyd June 6th. 
last sure. summer too. So, you know, roll what you got, add maybe a veteran and, uh, and, and make that a top priority next year. But anyway, this was great. This was a fun draft. Um, Seriously. I want to thank you very much, man. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for giving up half of your Saturday afternoon. Well, this drops on Wednesday, but to, uh, to do this with me, make sure you follow Ant on Twitter, by the way, at pro underscore Ant and cover one. Dude, <laughs> I might even just, I, I mean this, man. You guys just, it's unreal. The Not not the quantity, the quality of stuff that you guys put out, man. And, you know, a lot of podcasts out there are, are entertaining and informative. I feel like what you do, I feel like what, what Eric does is educational too. You know what I mean? I feel like when I pop in this guy's coverage and film room and all those shows, I, I honestly, I, I feel like, I'm learning shit. I also feel like I'm stealing some shit from you guys because I <laughs> see some stuff. I'm like, take that take. Oh, I'm going to make that my take now. But anyway, seriously, man, oh, thank you very much, but I really appreciate this. No, I appreciate you having me back. I'm sorry we couldn't link up earlier. And anytime you want me, you got me. I, I enjoy chopping it up with you here and uh, sitting in on the show, especially because it's a different type of vibe and, and style than what I do on disguise coverage and in the film room. And I appreciate the kind words for myself, for the brand, um, you know, hearing, Hearing you describe the work that I do is sincerely very meaningful to me, um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for the kind words, um, and thanks for stressing me out on a Saturday morning because this mock, I'm sweating, I'm tired. Like, this was this was fun, but it also stressed me out, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, and let, by the way, let's hope that the Bills don't make a trade for, like, Brandon Ayuk or some shit like that before. Uh, <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Before, like, oh, my God. And everybody's like, I can't believe you guys were double receiver after they traded for Ayuk. Be like, we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be back. Brand new show tomorrow. Talk to you then.